Hello there. Welcome to the On Point Woman with Dr. Ronnie. I'm Dr. Ronnie Adesani, and I'm excited that you joined me again today. You know, one thing about this program is it's focused on helping women, using the word of God to empower women, to keep you on point with your life, with the goal of God for your life, and especially in your family life, your everyday life as a believer. And I'm excited that God also informed, instructed me, that's the word I want to use, to make sure that I bring women that can empower you. It's a collaborative effort. None of us can do it by ourselves. So I'm excited today that my sister, my chief bridesmaid, my Aburo from another mother, like some people will say, my she's the youngest sister I never had because I'm the youngest of four and she is my youngest sister and I thank God for her life. So I'm glad to introduce to us again today, Professor Guvo. She's going to be sharing with us again. She's going to continue from where she stopped, God in my reality. And you know what? She's getting just fired up, ready to roll. Dr. Ireti, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Big Sis, for having me again. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. So your topic today that you're going to be speaking to us is how real is God meant to be in our lives? You know, it's one thing to say, hey, I love God. God is my God. But you've been talking and teaching us about putting God in the real time of our situation. How can we do that? And I'm hoping that today you can help our listeners understand how to do that. Over to you. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you again. How real is God meant to be in our life? Um, how real is me having a breakfast? How real is me having lunch? How real is me having dinner, getting to my car, going from point A to point B? That is how real God is meant to be in every situation, in every circumstance. Now, I'm not trying to ask us to be spooky and, oh, God is here. No, nothing like that, because there's a holy ease when God is with you and when you practice his presence in every situation, it becomes something that is just, I don't want to say second nature, but first nature to you. The Bible says, I think it's in Hebrews eleven three. It says, by faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And I do say the things that are visible are being sustained by things that are not that are not visible. Our very existence is being sustained by the by God Himself. We can't physically see Him, but our sustainers, our going from point A to point B safely, our having all our needs met, those are expression of this mighty God. Amen. that we serve, Amen. the great monarch of the universe who we have come to know as his children. So Amen. he, of course, he, he has to be real in every situation, in every circumstance. That is how real God needs to be in all that we do. There's a scripture, I think is I am um, Acts chapter 17, verse 27. I think the B part of it, you see, he is not far from each of us. That's right. If God is not far from each of us, then he's with us in every situation. When you want to make that decision, when you take that thing from the grocery store and you didn't return it to the right place, he's there. So okay. when, you, when we live with that consciousness, I think it makes us live our life in a way that matter. So the short answer to the question is, God is interested in every aspect. God is not a religious person or is not, doesn't want a religious connection with us that we just pay obeisance to him in the morning during our devotional and we're leaving packed there. No, he is with us every step of the way. And that is how real he ought to be. And if it's that real, when situation comes, we will be able to, okay, God, what do I do here? So that's how real I believe God needs to be. Because the Bible says, I think I act 17, 28, it says in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. So for Thank me, you, for that. That. you know, there's something you said that I wanted to you to expand on it a little bit more. You know, when you talked about we have to have him in every area of our lives, two things comes to mind. But what I really want to talk about is if we, because I really want us to get into the practicality of the world. That's really what that's why it's an on point woman. You want to get straight on point to the things that matter. 
So in our bedroom life, because I heard you say, is, is that also an area that we need God? And does that mean like we have to pray, God, okay, I'm about to be in, an, in a relationship with my husband coming. Mm. Tell me how to appropriate God, even in that area of our bedroom life, for example. How can we appropriate God? Praise God. God. Praise God. I'm glad you asked me that because it's one of the things that I get excited about when I talk to couples. And one thing we need to remember is God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's also omniscient. He knows all things, you know. And on top of that, he's omnipotent. He has all the power. The Holy Spirit does not suddenly leave your bedroom because you want to have an intimate moment with your, with your husband or with your wife, if men are listening, you know. He does not leave the room. You need to involve him even in that aspect as well. And if you practice it from the beginning, even of your marital life, it will, when you get to later years, when sometimes your body is not even in the zone, you will be able to ask for the Holy Spirit to help you. I've had hold situations- on, Hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold oh, on. No, 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 So you're saying that it's okay to pray? Say, Holy yes. Spirit, I need help with my bedroom life. Okay. It Hallelujah. is okay. Anything that you cannot ask God to help you with, you shouldn't be doing it. Exactly. Thank so you. So when we think about it like that, then as a married woman, I wouldn't want to go with another man because I can't ask God to help me with that because his blessing is not there. His blessing is in my right. intimate moment with my husband, the one that, I'm, that I've promised to love, to have, and to hold. So I will give you example practically in my own life. Sometimes we all lead very busy lives. That's sometimes right. I'm on call and I'm, I'm coming home and sometimes I'm driving. I'm like, God, you know what? It is important that I'm a blessing to my husband. So father, give me the grace to do it. Give me the presence of mind, strengthen my body to do it. And people like, seriously? Yes, seriously. Thank I you. ask God to help me. And sometimes it's something that even my husband recognizes that sometimes I'm like, just give me one minute while I get into it. That one minute, I'm like, God, my body is not in the zone right now, but Father, help me to be to be able to minister to my husband tonight. And if you pray it like that, it's amazing how he that watered is watered also. Um, Thank you. And, I, I, and you know what? We didn't plan all this, but I really want us to dig in a little deeper because, you know, there are things that are out there, resources out there for people, like people taking pornography and all those nonsense, trying mm -hmm. to find answer. And I'm glad you said it because one of the things I've always taught women is like your best teacher for your bedroom life is the Holy Spirit. True. I agree. And he 100%. has to help you. So we need mm -hmm. to really begin to, you know, these are areas that are like elephants in the room. We and you and I mm -hmm. didn't plan to talk about this. I really want us yeah, to we did help it. women yeah. get into this because, mm -hmm. you know, one mm -hmm. of the things I remember, like when we were younger and I was having, I was pregnant, you know, when you're pregnant, you have your moments. Mm -hmm. And all, all the time I tell you, this is because these are things that we practice too. I'll pray. I say, God, give me a new style today. Give me a new sense on how to help my husband enjoy me because I, my body doesn't want enjoyment. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. then I have the mm -hmm. responsibility to do mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. And I always ask the Holy Spirit to help me. And it's yeah. not like, okay, I, I'm going to go. Please let us pray before we do it. No, because, you, you know, I don't remember if you heard the story years ago, there were couples that before they started, why would they let us pray? And the man eventually said, you know what? This marriage is not going to work. No, no, you know, no. so, so it's very important. Can you just help? Let's talk a little bit about this mm. because a lot of women struggle with this area of their lives, especially as we're getting older, the, our bodies don't cooperate like when we were younger. Yes. How do we help women understand it? Cause I mm. want us to talk to young women. Let's talk. I guess God wants us to just deal with this topic today. That's it. Let's That's talk it. to young women first. The young now, are upcoming, the have yes. all the hormones in the yeah. right amount. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about how do we help them navigate this area, their bedroom life with the help of the Holy Spirit as okay. God is real. Yeah, it, it, it's, and I think, um, I'm happy you said that for later years, but what you don't practice when you're younger, sometimes it's a bit difficult to now introduce it when you're older. So as a young married woman, incorporate the Holy Spirit to help you right from the beginning. Even when the hormones are right, 
even exactly. for a woman, the hormones may be right, but it's only for about three or two, five days in a month when you're ovulating or something. But even when the hormones are not right, your husband has every right to drink water from his own system. That's the scripture. That's right. That's what the Bible so says. So you've got to really ask God to help you, even right from this time. And like we said, it's not, oh, let's pray. No, no, I, I'm just lying down there and I'm connecting with God. And if yes. your husband knows that that's the way you roll at the moment when your body don't feel, doesn't feel like it, then he will learn to flow with you, which is why it's important to marry a godly man as well that will understand that, okay, there are times that your body is not in the zone, but you receive the help of the Holy Spirit. And if he allows you, he himself will see the result of it. So Bible says, seek the Lord in your younger days, even while you're young. So this is a time to begin to incorporate that kind of, um, you know, a, a attitude or that kind of a practice. Because when the children come into it, a little bit more of your time will, take, will be taken. And when there are other things to be, to be dealt with, in these days, we're all working, we're lo looking after children. Some of us are working very far from home. You really need the help of the Holy Spirit. On a personal level, sometimes I'm driving home and I'm asking God, even on my way home, that oh, Father, very please I was me. just going to speak to that. Very help good. me, help me to be a blessing. Because, for instance, if I've been on call for the whole weekend and I'm coming home, I mean, the the man has a right to enjoy the wife of his youth. You understand? Yeah. So you you're pray, you're praying about that. You're getting your head in the zone. Because, right. and this is the mistake that many people make. They kind of feel, oh, God is not interested in, I know. This is the he reality that everything. I face. And this is what God is. God that has made my body with the hormones. And he said, be right. fruitful and multiply. It's part of it. And enjoy yourself and be a blessing to one another. And I think it's an area in our marriages that if we deal with it right, we will get the right result. If we involve God in the reality of what goes on, in our bedroom is very important. Women will stop having headaches when it's time right. for them to engage with their husband. Amen. So I think it's very important that we involve God in and even I'm in that glad aspect. You're saying that because you know that's something that we don't teach in the church. Mm. And mm. we really need to start teaching those kind of messages. Teach our young women how to be lovers. The Bible says the older women should teach the younger teach women the how to be lovers of their own husband. Every Very woman wonderful. has to learn that. You know, we let, I guess we, we just took God at his word and applied the word. Mm -hmm. In the totality, mm -hmm. that's how we took Christianity. We just took God at his word. Because that's, that's the simple truth. Like one of the things that I tell young people, I will text my husband now that we have all this technology, text him how much I love you. I'm looking forward to being in your arms. These are things we need to do. We need very to do important. these things. We need to very, do these things. Important. And I heard you say, when you're driving home, you pray. I pray mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I used to, I, I'll give you this joke. I used to tell people that, you know, my husband used to say, I used to say this about my husband that if he married me because of intimate relationship, he would have fired me. I wouldn't That's qualify. It. I wouldn't it's qualify. True. I wouldn't miss true. his needs because, you know, especially, you know, as physicians, when you're on mm. call, mm. Mm. you are exhausted. Exhausted, yeah. You yeah. soul and body. And when you're coming home, that's not really what you want, but you know it's something you need to do. It's your marital responsibility. That's it, that's it. And so we got to learn to include God in that area. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit to the older women because yeah. our hormones are all over the map. Yes, Talk yes. Talk a little bit about how do we help our older women? Because, and I'm hoping that one day you and I will come back and talk about marriage, some core values yes. that we yes. have yes. with marriage. Because, you know, mm. a lot of people don't understand the importance mm. of all these mm. pieces in their marriage. Uh, it shouldn't, I think, intimacy with our husbands as women and intimacy with our wives as, as uh, men, you know, um, shouldn't be a chore. It That's should be right. born out of love. It's because I love you. Because I love you, I want to bless you. Because I love you, mm -hmm. I want to minister to you. Because I love you, that is part of... So when we see it as is an expression of my love to my husband, then it, it, it takes a choreness, if I can use that word, yes, out right. of it. Out you of know, it. It, it, yeah, it, it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. So I want somebody to be set free. It's not a chore. It is an expression of your oneness and your, your being together as one. So that when the latter years are here, 
when the body is beginning to talk to you in a way that is negating your being intimate with your spouse, you really need God. Then you That's really right. need God in that reality for yourself. You need to put things in place. I mean, there are things that may be beyond the scope of this conversation. But when we talk about marriage, we'll talk more about it. If you're experiencing difficulty in a particular area, there are things out there that could be used, you know, and, uh, you know, kind of because we begin to get dry down below all of that. So there are things that could be put yeah. in place, you know, That's you know, right. and nothing. I don't mean drugs. And I, you said something about pornography. It is so wrong for exactly. people to try and use that. That is inviting demonic forces into your bedroom. I, I don't care how that. anybody did. And you see people that are engaged in such a thing, it is not of God. And I'm sorry to knock off anybody's theology. You cannot use pornography to spice off your intimate life. Bedroom life. No, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to help you. And it's amazing how he can structure your body. You see, as a man thinks in his heart, so easy. So easy. When you begin to think about it and begin to talk to God about it, things begin to change. And you will be ready to be a source of ministry to your to your, to, your, to your spouse, to your husband. One of the things I jokingly say many times is that um, um, you can't give him bond offering all the time. You know, there's bond offering, there's free will offering, there's sacrificial giving, there's tight, you know, you don't debate that, you know, but you can't keep giving a man bond offering. Bond toast is not good for your health. No. Bond offering is okay, just do and let me go, you know, you know, but sometimes you need to spice things up a little bit more, but, still under the unction and the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're Praise out God. of time, but you can see we're not out of the word. Dr. Professor Iriti, thank you so much for being a blessing again today. Folks, we're going to be back next time. She's going to start answering another set of questions. And I'm so glad that, you know, you touched on things that the church does not like to talk about. Thank you so much. God bless you and have an awesome, awesome week. God bless you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.